Even though I ordered this electric microphone amplifier with adjustable gain way back in December, I only just opened it now in August based on the Max 4466 microphone preamp. So I thought I would try it out and just see how it works. When I looked up the specs, it's supposed to work over 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, the audio range. So basically I wanted to test that and to make sure it looks relatively clear on the output and has gain. So it does say 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and you can set the gain from 25 times to 125 times. Now, I don't know if this is exact, like the minimum gain you can expect is 25. And also, most likely this is frequency dependent, so you're going to have different gains at different frequencies across 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So I just want to take a look and characterize it a bit. There's a reference here that normal speaking volume about six inches away can do 200 millivolts peak to peak and that might work well for a line level input if you want to feed this microphone into something else looking for line level. And if you want to use an analog to digital converter you might want a little more headroom than 200 millivolts so you turn the gain up and you can get higher voltages. The output is biased up halfway to the supply, so I'm using 5 volts and therefore the audio signal is going to ride on 2.5 volts and go up and down from there. So I'm just going to use AC coupling on the scope and just have it centered around 0 volts. But I can't really speak between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, so I'm going to use a signal generator and I'm going to need an audio amplifier and a speaker to generate the sound. So also back in December I ordered this TDA 2030 audio amplifier. It's 18 watts and I'm going to plug in a big speaker to this and see what I get when I plug the microphone amplifier output into here. This is the test setup. I have an old 8 ohm speaker which I don't know what it came out of. I'm using that with a sine wave signal generator to make sounds and it's a few inches away from the microphone module. So this speaker will generate the sine waves and I had to build a platform to raise it up so it will sit over the microphone. So I'm using part storage containers but this EVA foam, I was getting a lot of rattling of the components in here and this EVA foam helps absorb some of the vibration. So I can hang this over and pick up the sound with the microphone. So the module has 5 volts ground and an output signal of the amplified microphone. But I wanted to compare the actual microphone level so I added an extra input wire that I can put on the scope. Then I throw it on the breadboard so the input will come from the speaker. And then I have power ground and the output amplified signal and the actual microphone signal that it's picking up. And there's the scope probes picking up the input of the microphone and the output of the amplified signal. Powering the speaker, I have this audio amplifier module. I haven't actually used or tested this yet. This is the first time. There are screw terminals for the speaker out, which are going to the speaker. And then there's 0.1 inch headers for the input voltage, which has a wide supply. I'm giving it about 14 volts. Then I go to my signal generator. Again, I'm using the Regal generator, so I have more precise control over what I'm doing. And I can use it with a sweep of the tones so that I can actually just let it go running up or down or both in the frequency and I can just observe the output. And you can see the circuit is live now. The blue trace on the bottom is the actual microphone input signal and the yellow trace on the top is the amplified output. I adjusted the tiny trimmer pot on the bottom of the module until it looked like I was getting my maximum output, but really it doesn't matter exactly. I'm not trying to see exactly how much it can amplify. I just want to see that it does its job. So the signals here look like the yellow one is a little bit bigger than the blue. In fact, let me just trigger on this and capture a waveform. So I captured a single shot waveform, just me making noises into the microphone about a foot away. And 
well, aside from any weirdness, the actual amplitudes, I've got these on AC coupled mode, so it's centered around ground. Let's just roughly say that these are the same amplitude, but channel 2, blue, which is the raw microphone input, it's only at 10 millivolts per division, and the amplified output is 100 millivolts per division, so the output right now is about 10 times the input. And I noticed the gain changes at different frequencies, so there's a response characteristic. So I'm going to go back to just normal trigger mode and use the function generator. So now it will either pick up my voice or if I have the speaker running it'll pick up that. So I'm setting the signal generator to do 20 second long sweep upwards from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz and the speaker will drive the microphone from a few inches away. It's already starting to get too high. So you could see as the frequency was sweeping up, the amplitude of the yellow output trace was kind of getting larger and smaller depending on the frequency. Watching this waveform as I talk makes me feel like I am in Knight Rider. I'm going to break up the frequency sweep into different ranges to make it more practical to observe because also as the frequency gets higher, the amplitudes are getting tiny, almost flatlining, so I'd kind of need to scale the vertical up. Assuming, once again, the amplifier I'm using can even reproduce the signal generator high frequency. There could be any limiting factor here. Frequency response of the microphone itself, the microphone amplifier circuit, the audio amplifier I'm using. Let's just go from 20 hertz to 1 kilohertz. So the gain is about 100. And the gain kind of gets a lot bigger. Let's scale down channel 1. So now channel 2, the blue trace, is the microphone input, 10 millivolts per division. Channel 1, the yellow trace, is 200 millivolts per division. So when both traces have the same amplitude, the gain is 20 on the microphone amplifier. So let's sweep up from 20 hertz to 1 kilohertz and see how the output yellow trace gain changes. So I paused the signal at 247 hertz, and if I change the vertical scale on channel 1, the output, it's about equal in amplitude when it's at 100 millivolts, so the gain is 10 times when we are at about 250 hertz. So I will put it back to the same scale and go again, and then pause it maybe 500 hertz. So at 520 hertz, with channel 1 being at 200 millivolts per division, I'm not sure, I'm just going to ballpark and say the gain on the output has increased to maybe 15 times gain compared to the 250 or so hertz where it was about 10 times gain. And at about 770 hertz, the waveforms look about the same height and with the different vertical scales, now the gain is about 20 times. So now I'm going to just maybe sweep from 1 kilohertz to 10 kilohertz. So as it swept higher and higher, the blue trace, the input of the microphone, got a lot quieter because the speaker got a lot quieter, 
but I was seeing a lot more gain on the yellow output trace. For example, here at 4 kilohertz, if I change the vertical scale on the output yellow trace, let's just estimate this to be about equal, right? Well, now we're at 500 millivolts of division against the 10, so the gain is 50 at 4 kilohertz. I thought I would try sweeping through the frequencies manually and just see that I'm roughly picking up something in the target zone. So right now I'm set for 18 kilohertz and it's picking up my voice. So when I stop talking, let's see, does the frequency measurement sort of imply we're in that ballpark and we're actually picking up what we're generating? So what if I do 20 kilohertz now? And it looks like we're picking up 20 kilohertz. And so the little amplifier module, the speaker, the microphone, the microphone preamp are all picking up and passing on 20 kilohertz. And we're getting gain. I would call this a success. So that's not a bad little electric microphone module. You can adjust the gain here if you need to do different things, and it seems to work over the 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz band, so good deal. Now I should go take this unnecessary wire off before I short something out. 